Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be traveling back to the late 90s slash early 2000s to explore a neat little modification program for Windows 9X based systems called 98 Lite, which gives you the ability to remove components from Windows that Microsoft doesn't normally allow you to remove. So with it, you can make, in this case, our Windows 98 installation take up less space on your hard disk and become far more lightweight than it was before, hence the name. This was created by a guy named Shane Brooks, an Australian in the late 90s. Now, he's also the guy behind a program called IE Radicator, which is an Internet Explorer removal tool, a free tool, for Windows 9X and 2000. So 98 Lite is kind of an expansion on that. You can even replace Windows Explorer, the IE infested one that we have in Windows 98 here, with the one from Windows 95, which you can't do with IE Eradicator. That will remove Internet Explorer, but it will leave Windows Explorer untouched, and you can still use it to browse to websites like you can in IE. And one of the kind of crazy things is this software, even though it was last updated in 2003, is still being sold today. You can go over to the website and buy a license for $25. I know because I did it. We're going to be checking out the full version of this program today. Now, there is a demo available that lets you remove just Internet Explorer and a couple of other things, but that's kind of designed to just give you a taste of what the program can do. You know, assuming this was like 2002, I mean, I can't imagine there's that many people people buying this software today. Maybe there's like a specialized use case for it, but uh, you can still buy it, and I did, so let's just get on with this, shall we? Now, when you purchase this, you'll get emailed login credentials for this back-end customer portal, and that's where you can download the 98 Lite executable, as well as the necessary files from Windows 95 if you wanted to replace Windows Explorer, which we are gonna do in this video. And I've copied all of that over to this CD right here but first we're going to put in a windows 98 setup cd a windows 98 second edition setup cd to be exact uh, because as you can see we don't have anything on this drive so we're going to put that in and restart here and we'll get on with this and I gotta say, it's nice to be back doing a video on the $5 Windows 98 PC because it has definitely been a while. In fact, this is the first video I'm making on this thing since I moved into my new place. And yeah, I have had a couple people commenting like saying, where is the 98 PC? It's been a while and yeah, it definitely has been, but it's good to be back, you know, getting back to our roots uh, with a video like this. So yeah. We'll start the computer with CD-ROM support here, and we're going to immediately swap out the disk once again with the 98 Lite uh, CD that I made here. So we'll pop that one in, and we'll close up the drive, go over to the D drive, and let's do a directory listing here. And the executable we have to run is 98 Pro 47, which is the only executable, well, not the only executable, we got explore.exe, but you know, you can't run that in DOS. So we'll run this here. And here's the initial setup screen. So it says 98 Lite 4.7 Professional Edition, a custom installer for Windows 9X. So we're going to uh, press any key to continue. It gives you a list of kind of the, the things that it does. And here is the three-step setup process. So it's gonna start by extracting the files from the distribution archive. So we'll do that. We'll go to install here. And now we have to enter our encryption key, which is a form of copy protection that it's got here to prevent software piracy or at least cut down on it. So I've got the encryption key here. It's the same key for everybody. It's sent to you in that uh, initial email with your um, account information. And there we go. So now it gives us our destination directory. And this is where it's going to extract everything that's needed to modify the Windows 98 setup to allow you to make all these modifications. So we'll do that. Installation successful. So we'll press enter. And now it's going to prepare the Windows 9X setup folder. So we'll press enter once again. Uh, we have a general failure reading drive A. Uh, wow, that's exciting. Okay, can we just abort? Um, oh, we need a command interpreter. Okay, so I've got a Windows 98 boot floppy in the drive now. So we actually have a command interpreter so we can continue on. So the first thing it brings up is the manual, which pretty much just tells you 
you know, how to use this, how to go through the installation process, all of that. We're just going to uh, quit out of that. And now it says to complete step two, open the folder you just installed 98 Lite to read the text, which we just did technically, and uh, run 98 Lite.exe. So we're in that folder. We're going to run 98 Lite.exe. Uh, right here tells you about the things you're going to need. You'll need your Windows 98 setup disk, which we have. And it says enter the path to install 98 Lite 2. Uh, 98 Lite will also copy the Windows setup cab uh, files to this location. So we'll go with the default directory. And now we have to put in the Windows 98 setup disk. So we're going to eject this one and pop in our good old 98 CD. And it already has letter E selected, which is correct. So we'll go with drive E. Oh, I believe it's E uh, Win 98 maybe. Yep, there it is. All right, so that's done. We're going to press any key to continue. There are a couple of ways that you can install 98 Lite. You can, if you already had Windows 98 installed, you don't have to reinstall it. You can do option two here, which is take control, and it will convert Windows features, as it says in quotes there, to optional components that will appear in the add or remove programs uh, menu. So you can go in there and then remove all the stuff that you don't want. The other option you can do with Windows 98 installed is the shell swap. So if all you want to do is change your Windows Explorer to the one from 95, that's what that option will do. You've also got option four for cleanup if you want to uh, get rid of all the 98 Lite modified components from the setup folder. We're of course going to go with option one, which is a clean install. And you've got four options here sleek chubby overweight and 98 micro so we're going to go with 98 micro because this will not only replace explorer with 95 explorer but it's also the option that installs the least amount of components so this is basically going to be as bare bones as you can make windows 98 b and it explains what it is here in more detail if you wanted to go back and uh, change your selection from here so it says 98 micro is the smallest fastest and cleanest windows ever it installs windows with the sleek Windows 95 Explorer shell and without a trace of the MS HTML engine. So that's great. We'll press any key to continue. Now this option right here is pretty useful if you want to speed up your boot process even more than 98 Micro will already do. Uh, and this is referring to the checks that Windows will perform on various system files to see if they've been changed, you know, during the startup process. So we're going to say, no, we don't want to include system file version checking. And now it's going to search for the 95 Explorer file. So it's going to ask us for the CD drive again, which is drive E. And they're just on the root of the E drive. Yes, they are. Oh, is it not in here? Oh yeah, it's not in here. Look at that. Yeah, I almost forgot that I had put in the uh, 98 setup disk. So yeah, there we go. Let's try that again. It's in drive E. What do you mean they were not found? Yes, they are. They're on the root of the disk. Shut up. Yeah, there you go. Now it works. Okay. <laughs> okay, whatever. Uh, I had to like restart, like, I had to type in drive E again there for some reason I didn't want to just retry and see that it was there. I was like, shut up, those files are on there, do not tell me they're not. Okay, we got past that, forcing compatibility of all these files here. These are some of the options that will appear in the component selection screen if you choose custom, which we are going to do. And... I believe now it will, yep, it's going to run scan disk, so we'll press enter, no errors, great. And now it's setup is going to initialize, preparing the Windows 98 setup wizard, see windows. Here is where we're going to select custom, and you see this list is much larger than it normally is, especially if we were to go into like accessories here, we've got 18 components to choose from. So... Yeah, you've got some more things in here that you can turn off. So what we're gonna do is get rid of everything. We're going to uncheck. We're gonna say, yes, we wanna remove that. That's fine, remove multimedia system tools. So we've got none of these optional components and the components that have now been turned into optional components selected. So we're gonna hit next. We're going to name this uh, 98 PC, that's fine. All that's good, United States. We're not gonna bother with the startup disk. Just cancel out of that. It'll probably ask us to eject drive A, we'll do that. 
and start copying files. And this will go much faster than it normally does because number one, it's running off of the hard disk. Number two, it doesn't have to copy as many files over. And 98 Lite actually modifies the setup a little bit. It adds a, a screen at the end, you know, like one of these text blurbs here. And it says, hey, thanks for choosing 98 Lite and, you know, we hope you enjoy it and something like that. You'll see that once it... Uh, once it shows up here, but something tells me it's not going to actually take 23 minutes because we're already almost halfway done. Yep, definitely not gonna take 23 minutes or whatever it was. I hope 98 Lite makes your Windows 98 experience even more enjoyable. Shane Brooks, lightpc.com. Thanks Shane, we appreciate that. So we're gonna restart now and there's no need to have this disc in the drive anymore. So we'll take that out. Oh yeah, and here's the new boot screen, by the way. This is customizable too. This is just the default one, but you can uh, download one of the boot screens or even just make your own. But the 98 Lite website, again, in that uh, user or customer portal has some other boot screen options that you can download. So we'll just uh, put in Michael here for the name. I accept, gotta get our product key. And there we go. We'll hit finish. And it's just got to go through this last portion here. It's got to initialize the driver database and all that. You guys have seen this setup before. It's really nothing special. And well, here we are, guys. Yeah, doesn't this look extremely bare bones? So you got my computer and recycle bin are the only things on the desktop. And if we open up my computer, sure enough, we've got that classic Windows 95 non-IE infested Explorer, which if you preferred this, well, here it is. It's all uh, here and set up for you. If we go into the start menu, this is what I'm most interested in seeing is how uh, how minimal that this is. So if we go to programs here, we've got a 98 light folder, which has the 98 light. I assume this is the same setup thing. Yeah, so you can go through here and maybe make some modifications if you want. We also have, I saw a configure windows shortcut which probably is going to bring up yep add or remove programs and this is where you could add these components if you want to just like you know you can normally do you just got to put in your windows 98 setup disk and select the components you want and you can uh, install them and remove them again if you want to let's go back in here under accessories we've got entertainment which has nothing in it and we've got notepad so it didn't remove the entertainment folder but it got rid of everything inside of it and all we have left is notepad which is all the entertainment well it's not entertainment but you know all the windows accessories that you will ever need is just notepad so let's go ahead and i'm not going to bother saving that we'll close out of that so that's notepad what more can be said about it startup you've got nothing you've got ms dos prompt and windows explorer and that's it yeah guys it is extremely bare bones which i mean hey that's great for older systems that might have a smaller hard drive or just can't run windows 98 that well this would have been really great to just have it have a much more minimal footprint uh, compared to what it normally has i'm sure you guys are interested in seeing the hard disk space situation so we go to my computer here and we'll go to properties. Now, right now it's taken up 226 megabytes of space. Now I'm sure you're saying, wait a second, that's like a normal Windows 98 installation. Of course, depending on what components that you select. Um, so why on earth is, is, is it using up all this space? Well, that's because we still have this 98 setup folder on the drive, which takes up 127 megabytes of space. And this is again, the folder where it copied over all the 98 setup files to, and we don't need it anymore. So we're just going to delete it and we'll move all its contents to the recycle bin. And we'll say yes to all. I wonder if it did it install 98 light to okay i did did i just delete it from here yes okay so it was still relying on that that is a, a good thing to note so for all this stuff in here for you to still have 98 light it doesn't like install that to program files it's still in that same folder yeah 102 megabytes now oh wait i mean 98.1 megabytes yeah so what i did is i actually copied the 98 light files back over to the hard disk and then ran through the program again and selected option four which was supposed to clean up everything and interestingly it did not remove the files from the 98 setup folder all those modified files that were in there it did not change those whatsoever which i found kind of odd they were still on the disk so then i removed that folder again and the entire 98 light program and now we're down to 98.1 megabytes which 
that is a really slim down Windows install, I have to say. And for those wondering, we can go and take a look at what we actually have on here, like in the Program Files folder. You see, it looks like we have a decent amount of folders in here. I mean, maybe not a decent amount compared to a normal install of Windows 98, but I mean, you got Media Player, Plus, Outlook Express, NetMeeting, Internet Explorer. Wait a second, I thought we removed that. Well, we did. These are just blank folders. You got Connection Wizard inside, and then there's nothing inside of that. And that's pretty much the case with all of these. NetMeeting, I think, no, it's got nothing in there. Outlook Express has nothing in there. Plus has the Themes folder, but there's nothing in there. Windows Media Player, there's nothing in there. You see a theme going on here? Oh, a theme like the Plus themes. Yeah, okay, I'll just move on. Uh, common Files, Microsoft Shared, there's nothing in there. Chat, there's nothing in there. And Accessories, we have Hyper Terminal, and there's nothing in there. So there's literally no actual programs in the Program Files folder. Uh, all the programs we have, well, just the few, we have Notepad and DOS Prompt and Windows Explorer are all in the Windows folder, so they're all stored in here. And I'm sure we have some other stuff in here, like we've got fontview.exe, uh, though it's not gonna open because we don't have a font file we're telling it to open. Uh, we have control panel, obviously. And yeah, here's Notepad. You've got regedit, of course, you still need to have that. So there are some other programs on here that just aren't in the start menu, but I mean, regedit is normally not in the start menu anyway, so. Yeah, I mean, that is, that is pretty much it, guys. This is a really, really slimmed down install of Windows 98. I mean, again, under 100 megabytes, 98.1 megabytes, and it's honestly quite impressive. It's just cool to see uh, programs do stuff like this. I mean, there is a ton of customizability in this program, and I think it would have been really useful for somebody back in the early 2000s that was using Windows 98 on an old computer. Nowadays, though, I mean... I literally just bought this program for this video. I have no use for it otherwise, and I'm sure most of you out there are probably in the same boat. This is something you're not really interested in buying, but I mean, if you are, the option is there. I'll have the website linked down below if you want to at least try out that demo version and kind of see how it works. But yeah, that is all I have for you guys today. That's going to wrap it up for today's episode. I hope you all enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.